So here's a quad that I should have reviewed back in November. But in November, something happened with this, sending one of these into the water, which completely threw the review off the rails. I've since gotten another one, and before I reviewed this and before I talked about this quad, I really wanted to go ahead and put it through its paces. After it just plummeted into the water, I honestly lost faith in this build, in this design. And in this video, I wanna talk about my entire experience. I wanna talk about the drone, but I think there's enough reviews out there on these for you to sort of make a good decision on iFlight as a company. But I also wanna focus on the experience I had with iFlight because I think that is equally as important as the discussion of the Camara 7 Pro. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and I do wanna disclose that iFlight did send this quad out to me for review. I reached out to them and asked them if I could work with them and review this quad. However, I wanna make it abundantly clear that I will still kick iFlight square in their effing peach over this because this review cost me money and that is, mm, just, I still have a bad taste in my mouth over the whole situation, and we're gonna talk about that. But, with that being said, let's just sort of jump into the specifications on what makes this Chimera 7 so interesting. So first things first, it is packing the brand new O3 air unit. And if you looked on the outside, you probably couldn't tell where that air unit actually is. And one of the cool things with iFlight and their latest builds is that they like to enclose everything to where you can't see any of the internal components, which sort of is an interesting thing because it makes these less hobby grade and more mainstream consumer. Now there is one thing to keep in mind about this is the fact that DJI does not recommend that you do enclose the O3 air unit. Now the way that iFlight is getting around this with the O3 air units is that they've put a heat sink at the very bottom. So they're removing the bottom plate and essentially screwing on a heat sink that rests right at about here. So it does allow for airflow to help dissipate the heat. And in my experience, it does actually work pretty well. I had some initial concerns that it would get too hot and potentially shut down, but that does not appear to be the case in the Camara 7 Pro, so that is awesome. The flight controller is the Blitz flight controller, and that is paired with a 55 amp ESC. So on specs, on paper, it all seems to be fantastic. Brand new Blitz flight controller, brand new Blitz ESC and it is a very, very clean build inside of here. However, it is very, very compact within the internals of this. So you don't have a lot of space to really maneuver things. And if you had to do repairs on your own, good luck, because there is a lot going on when we start talking about these LEDs. Speaking of these LEDs, they are customizable. You can set them up to basically blink different colors. I have mine set up to give me the status of my GPS. So when my GPS is ready to go and I have a lock, it goes green. When it is not ready, it stays red. And that's just something that's pretty helpful um, when you're in the field and you don't wanna boot up your goggles or you're trying to preserve battery life. Um, those are things that can make life a little bit easier. The motors are a 2806 motor. I'm not 100% sure on the KV. I believe that the KV is 1700 KV. Don't quote me on that, but um, there is no markings on the motors. They went with the blacked out motors for that clean look. 
And yeah, overall, I mean, it is a very, very clean design. Now it is pretty heavy at 750 grams. So this is not something that you're going to pretty much want to freestyle. This is going to be something you're going to strap a pretty big battery to and just send it as far as you can go. Now this version does have Crossfire built in. The original version that I did get did not have Crossfire. I was using the DJI uh, RC Link, which I'll touch more on that in a little bit, but I've said this in the past, I don't really recommend going with the DJI RC Link because if something happens, you are not going to have any sort of redundancy as far as control. So I recommend doing Crossfire or Express LRS if that's what you're into. Um, the Crossfire for me just works fantastic. All right. Let's talk about some of the things that I had to make changes on with the Chimera 7 Pro, because again, this is the second version that I've had. So when I first got the first version, I thought to myself, I could just strap one of these batteries to the top of here and just use the uh, flight camera as my GoPro, just replace the GoPro essentially and not need an additional camera. But when I first started flying this, I noticed that there were some pretty heavy vibrations within the footage and it really wasn't smooth. We had a lot of micro jitters, a lot of bobble. When I reached out to iFlight, they basically said that um, it probably was because I was flying it on a windy day and that I should try again with less wind. At the time, I accepted that response for them because it was still new. I was still in the process of trying to figure this out. Decided to strap a GoPro to here. I put the Hero 10 bones on here and I began flying it with the bones. And for the most part, it was fine. I had about like two or three flights in and life was grand. Then I had an idea that I wanted to do a range test on the Camara 7 Pro. So I did just that. I went out to a local lake that wasn't far from my house, I decided that I would fly the Camara 7 Pro and uh, send it across the lake. Now, I have experienced no problems up until this point, and even when the problem occurred, I was still absolutely shocked. So, full disclosure, I did not wait for a GPS lock, but even if I got a GPS lock, I don't know if it would have helped me because I also had the ability to arm the quad without waiting for a GPS position. Now, the reason why I did that was because the O3 air unit does get pretty hot. I was trying to keep it cool. We're doing a review. The last thing that you're thinking about is that something is going to go wrong that would send this drone plummeting into the water. So I ended up taking off and did not have satellites. So return the home, any sort of fail safe like that would not have functioned. I made it all the way across the lake no issue and I mean, I pushed it pretty far with the transmission system and I still had full HD bars and I wasn't like at a, a really high altitude. I think at the highest I was at maybe like 100 feet. Uh, I think most of the time I was like at 70 and 50 feet across the lake and it was fantastic. Coming back towards me, I mean, the drone is literally facing towards me and I'm close. I'm probably maybe, I wanna say, 500 feet away from myself and I completely lose video. Now again, I'm line of sight to the drone. I am, there's nothing blocking me and I just completely lose video. And I decided that I would try to throttle up. I would try to power out of this and I took the goggles up and nothing and I just hear splash. So basically what I believe occurred during this flight was that maybe the amp draw was too high for the built-in voltage regulator and the voltage regulator shut down and when it shut down it no longer powered the air unit now because it shut down and no longer powered the air unit i not only lost video but i also lost my rc link hence my point that you probably don't want to buy one of these long range quadcopters if you plan on using the dji RC as well. I know it seems super convenient, but because they run in the same unit, if you lose video, you're also going to lose the ability to control your drone. It's just a bad combination. You need to have some sort of redundancy. And that redundancy comes in the form of Crossfire. Crossfire works really well. Obviously having a fail safe that I should have waited for probably would have also helped as well, but I'm not even sure how I would have landed it if in fact the voltage regulator would have been depleted. I'm not sure how that would have went down. I was in a safe spot. I mean, the worst thing that could have happened, it lands in a tree, but 
it's something that I'll, I'll never know. But our suspicion is after talking to Mads Tech and looking at the amp draw is that the amp draw was too high for the Blitz flight controller at two amps. That's just not enough overhead. And iFlight electronics as a whole aren't really known for their reliability. Across the board, so many people complain about their flight controllers and their ESCs having issues. They're almost as bad as FET tech in a lot of ways, but that's another story. So anyways, I lost that quad. I then reached out to iFlight explaining to them the situation and sending them the screenshots because I was pretty upset. I was pissed off. I lost a Hero 10 Bones. I lost a $100 battery. These batteries are about $100. $100, and this is a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. The battery I had on here at the time was a 4,500 milliamp hour Cinelifter battery, which is like 120 bucks. So all in, I lost just about $600 between the GoPro and the battery, and there was no chance of retrieval simply because of how that lake is, and it's just covered in lily pads, and you'll, you'll never find it. So I messaged them and basically I got the response where it like sort of like, what do you want us to do? A third party component failed. They were blaming the crash on the DJI air unit at the time. And I just couldn't accept that given the fact that I had multiple air units at this moment doing these reviews and I hadn't had any issues. And this was an issue that I had directly with their build. So I went back and forth with them and then they said to me, well, we'll send you out a Camara 7 Pro, but we're not going to send you an 03 version. We want you to take one of your existing quads that you have 03 or one of your existing air units that you have, and we want you to install the 03 air unit into our Camara 7 Pro. And I said, no, because that's not how it's being shipped. Why should I have to cannibalize or utilize one of my air units to review a product for you, which is only going to help you. They're not paying me. I don't have affiliate links with iFlight. There is no benefit to me other than the fact that I was interested in this quad. So I went back and forth and I basically said, okay, if this is how you're treating me, how would you treat a consumer that bought a product and complained about this issue? Would you make them install their air unit? You're going to hand them something incomplete? and they completely went ghost. About three days later, a manager from iFlight reaches out to me and you know they reiterated the fact that I didn't wait for the GPS lock and the position hold. They reiterated the fact that this was likely a fault of the air unit. They pushed all the blame back on DJI and didn't take any of the blame themselves. When the reality is, is these air units, they won't shut off on their own. They just won't. It takes like an act of God for them to shut off. I've tried over my testing. The fact is that the amp draw was probably too high and it's something that iFlight did not calculate because if you watch other reviews of the iFlight quads that have O3, most recently Captain Drone, and this is, this is what I mean with these influencers, they will sort of skirt over and, and sweep things under the rug to preserve their relationships with companies like this that don't give a fuck about the consumer just to line their pockets. In his review, his drone completely blacked out as well. And you know what he blamed it on? He blamed it on his battery. I got news for you. A battery isn't just going to sag where it's gonna knock out your video like that. It, it just doesn't happen like that. That's just not how a battery is. It's not gonna take out your video to that point. If a battery is going to sag, you're going to notice a degenerative loss of power. I just spit everywhere. Like it's just gonna be progressively lost and, and that's it. Like. It's not gonna just black out and come back. You can't get away with blaming that. There's something happening on these voltage regulators on the Blitz stack specifically that it's not capable of handling the amp draw from the iFlight, or I should say from the O3 air unit. So when they gave me this drone here specifically, one of the things that I did do is that I opened this up I took the leads off of the flight controller and I soldered it directly to the battery. Now you shouldn't have to do this with the bind and fly, right? You just shouldn't have to do this. Because the O3 air unit is capable of handling 6S input, I just went directly to the battery and I feel a lot more confident in knowing that I'm not gonna get a brown out because of the amp draw from the, the O3 air unit. So 
you know, your mileage may vary. Um, I've been using the Diatone stacks for a little while now, and the reason why I've been using those is they have a three amp BEC, and that three amp BEC hasn't let me down as of yet, knock on wood. But with this, I don't trust the iFlight stack at all. And I highly recommend if you do have one of these, just run it directly off a of battery. You're probably gonna be in a much safer position and have a lot less issues with the performance of this quad. It's a beautiful quad. It's probably the best bind and fly long range quad on the market today, just as overall design, aesthetics, and the user experience when you're unboxing it. But the things I look for in a user experience completely is how they handle situations when things go wrong, and do they take preventative measures when developing these products to prevent situations like this from happening in the future? And from the best I can tell is that they just didn't do enough of research on the amp draw with the flight controller they have. And number two, they don't like hearing that their products can be faulty. They don't like hearing that. They have obviously a lot of pride and that is a problem. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and play some footage now that I've shot some comparative footage between the DJI Osmo Action 3 and the onboard video from the Chimera 7 Pro. Alrighty, so that footage right there was shot at 4K 60 frames per second. I think the Action 3 was shot at 4K 30, but I, overall I think the footage looks pretty fantastic. Like I said, I was getting some micro vibrations on the first unit, so when I got this unit back, one of the things I changed was the PWM frequency to the motors. It was set to 24. I went ahead and changed it to 48 for all the motors, and that seemed to remove that vibration that I was getting. Now they did go ahead and make this to where it is isolated here and um, in all right it should keep the vibrations down but you will need to go into BL Heli 32 and change the PWM frequency to 48 kilohertz and that should remove any vibrations if you want to use the O3 air unit as your onboard camera but overall yep yeah, that's it that's my review of the iFlight um, Chimera 7 Pro. I mean, there's really nothing different from the previous generation that they created other than the fact that now this comes with OcuSync 3. I'm not gonna say this is the best drone of 20. I don't like saying titles like that. I think those are the stupidest titles. This is just, it's a quad. It's a great quad. I wouldn't say it's the best, but I do wanna say one thing to iFlight before I close this video. And I just, I just wanna say fuck you for your customer service you for your shoddy business practices Fuck you I don't really care if I work with you I'll buy your quads if I want to spot check it Fuck the influencers that just want to put their relationships with these companies first before the people that support them throughout the duration of their time on YouTube so just Fuck 
And let's just say it in Chinese in case you didn't quite get it or understand it. So one more time. I flight. That's it. Stay original. If it ain't about the bottom line, it's not important. I don't entertain a buyer if I cannot afford it. I don't like the 808 if it is not disordered. And I really wish you would, but this is not a force on back in my bag. Once again.